Hello everybody, I am your host, Houndog5, as today we are starting a brand new thing. I would like to welcome you guys to the Houndog5 podcast. So, without any more further introductions, let's jump into it. So, today's, uh, today's subject, <laughs> today we're going to be talking about flat earth, why the earth isn't flat. I know, ooh, big, big discovery why the earth isn't flat, so uh, let's jump into it. So, uh, why do people think that the earth's, why the, uh, why the earth is flat? Personally, I don't know, but uh, I'm just going to give you a rundown in the history of why the earth isn't flat. So, uh, it originally began back in uh, 300 BC, around ancient Greek times where the uh, Greek philosopher uh, Aristotle was uh, traveling to Egypt and he saw uh, constellations of stars and uh, he became the very first person to calculate the circumference of the earth and uh, a little bit while later down the line uh, Islamic scholars would make further advancements and measurements during the 9th century and um, a little while later during the uh, 16th century European navigators circled the earth in ships and convoys and stuff and uh, they were possibly the final proof that the earth wasn't flat. So uh, flat earthers are not anything new they've been around for at least 200 years or so going about back to the 1800s um so uh, it, it was a uh, because of a backlash to scientific studies and uh the bible and questioning the bible during the 1800s that would spark the flat earth theory um perhaps the most famous person to talk about this subject and who was pro flat earth was a British writer by the name of uh, Samuel Robotham and he proposed that the earth is a flat irremovable disk and it's centered at the North Pole and Antarctica and he also said that the North Pole and Antarctica were replaced by a gigantic ice wall and the and uh Practically, the earth is cut in half, is essentially what he's saying. So think about a pizza. Cut it in half once, you get two big slices. And then you fold one slice on top of the other, and that's practically what he's saying. And uh, it would spark the flat earth theory. So, let's move a little bit closer to present day. Let me take you to the 1950s. Yeah, I remember the 1950s. Um, so a guy by the name of Samuel Shelton would create the International Flat Earth Research Society, which was a uh, a uh, society that was based in UK, and it was uh, regarded by many people as a symbol of British power, and a lot of people found it amusing. And with little consequence. So it's practically a cult. Essentially. And and they would practically run it for a very long time. And about till early 2000s. When the internet was well established everywhere. And um, it would become to bubble up again. During the early 2000s. Flat Earth would explode into popularity. And uh, mostly in the United States. And discussions left, right, up and down everywhere. On online forums and everywhere. Would talk about the flat earth. Is the earth flat? And talk about the, the uh, flat earth society. The flat earth society would uh, come up with a second variation. Or uh, relaunching itself in uh, 2009. And would begin... A annual flat earth conference 
there are a lot of disagreements with the uh, Earth models, I guess. Some people say it's round, which it is. Some people say it's a cube. I don't know where that one came from. The most famous flat Earth today subject. And those are about the most famous ones. And uh, a lot of people, uh, let's, and a lot of people will either go flat Earth or the cube. And uh, a lot of people saying that the edges of the cube are surrounded by ice in the oceans. And others suggest that the flat Earth and the atmosphere are encased and nothing that could fall off the edge. So uh, to account for night and day cycles, more most uh, flat earthers think that the sun moves in circles around the North Pole and with the light acting more like a spotlight to neighboring nations and stuff. Um, so uh, the most recent example suggests that the sun and moon are about 50 kilometers in di diameter and the circle and the circle the disc shape at a height of about 5500 kilometers with the stars above this and it's rotating and it's like it's like an animation practically and a lot of and uh this one's actually pretty funny <laughs> A lot of the uh, flat earthers are also reject also reject gravity. Yes, I don't know how that one happened, but um, a lot of the flat earthers like to reject gravity for some weird reason. Uh, physicians and anyone who is mentally sane are gonna scoff at these ideas, but a lot of people are worrying that this type of thing is spreading rapidly and gaining extreme proportions outside of America. There are a lot of them around the world, uh, mostly in the US, UK, and all around Europe. And uh, a lot of people say it would be easy to dismiss that the earthers are simply being misguided due to a lack of education. While there are indications that that could be true, or they could have a low level of scientific literacy or education for that matter. Um, a lot of people are saying that flat earthers aren't necessarily people who don't believe in science. It's not really an education thing. And a lot of people are saying that's more like it's really about distrusting authority and institution. And it's mainly being based on the conspiracy mentality and a deeply held belief that is simple, that is a, a lot, um, that is a lot like a religion or even a cult. But flat earthers aren't, but it's not exactly tied to religions or cults. And it's very interesting. It's a very interesting thing. And that was just a quick rundown on Flat Earthers. I hope that uh, you guys really like the very first episode of the podcast. And please stick around. Don't forget to like and subscribe.